Hello, I'm Regina. Welcome to my lab two of Physics 2211. This is motion of a falling object. The purpose of this lab is going to explore Newton's second law when gravity and drag are also involved. We're going to be doing this by analyzing the motion of an object that is dropped from rest and falls somewhat slowly and straight down. We are also going to be exploring this by comparing an object's observed position and its predicted position based on two computational models, one of which is going to be by just considering gravity and the other one by also considering the effect of drag. So some of the basic concepts that we should be familiar with include Newton's second law, which states that the acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the net force acting on it and inversely proportional to its mass. Gravity is also one of the forces that can be described by Newton's second law. In this case of gravity, the net force can be the gravitational force, which acts on an object due to its mass, and this way giving us acceleration. And finally, drag is a force that opposes the motion of an object through a fluid, which in this case can be air or water. It can be thought of as the result of friction and pressure differences between the front and the back of an object as it moves through the fluid, which in our case is air. Here is a diagram I made to help us visually understand how gravity and drag are both interacting with our falling object in our experiment. As you can see, gravity is the force dragging our ball downwards, while drag is the force dragging it upwards. And also on the right side, you can also see some useful formulas which include final velocity, final position, and the force of drag. So moving on to our first experiment, this is the video of the falling object that we used for our video analysis. And here, in order to perform this analysis, we used a motion tracker that allowed us to plot the position of our falling object over time. In this case, we set the axis in a way that the starting position of our ball is set to zero, even if it's falling for one meter above the floor. So our system is our ball, our surroundings are the air, the floor, and everything else. And our initial velocity is zero, since our object is falling from a resting position. After gathering this information, I was able to move on to the computational models. In this first section of code, I just established the key values you can see on the screen, which were the same for both models, with the exception of drag being zero for the first model and a positive value for the second one. So for the gravity computational model, we only consider gravity into our forces. With this being said, for our net force, we just multiplied our mass times negative gravity since it's falling. And then for our velocity, we divided our net force by our mass times delta t. And now moving on to our gravity and drag computational model, we now consider drag into our forces. In order to do this, we had to individually compute our gravity and drag forces and then add it, them together to get our net force. And then for our velocity, it was pretty much the same. We just divided our net force by our mass times delta t. Finally, after obtaining all this information, I was able to put together our final graph to compare all of our data. In this case, time is being used as our x-axis with a delta time of 0.33 seconds between each data point. In our y-axis, we can see the position of our object over time. The blue data points represent the data obtained from our observational analysis made from the video. The red data points represent our first computational model in which we use gravity. And last but not least, our yellow data points represent our second computational model in which we also consider dragged in addition to gravity. As observed from the graph, the distance traveled by the object of our first computational model was the biggest one out of all three. This is most likely due to the fact that no upwards force was considered as compared to the other two experiments. We can also observe that our observational model and our second computational model, which consider drag, are very, very similar. This is probably due to the fact that very similar forces are interacting with each respective object. But it is also to note that our drag coefficient used in our second computational model had to be adjusted for the purpose of this experiment, so there might be some slight variance in the accuracy of our results. Finally, some questions include which models predict a terminal velocity, 
Well, terminal velocity happens when the force of drag has exactly balanced the force of gravity. So in our case, all of our graphs showcase the curve up until the end, so none of them show terminal velocity. However, our third experiment was the one that showcased the smallest change towards the end. So if I had to choose, it would be that that model would be the closest one to predicting terminal velocity. And last question is, imagine that the object was initially thrown downward. Will the terminal velocity be different from when the same object was dropped from rest? And my answer is no. No, final velocity is dependent on the weight of an object and the gravity and drag of the environment, so the initial velocity is irrelevant to the result and does not affect terminal velocity. And that was my lab number two. Thank you very much. Bye!